gospel, when Jesus said, unless I, uh, in fact, Thomas would say, unless I see, I will not believe. We could say, to see is to believe. We common, commonly say that. If we have doubt, doubt to others. Do you know the joy of the resurrection? As the apostles would experience, or the apostles experience. The risen Lord revealed the glory of his resurrection to his disciples gradually and over a period of time. Even after the apostles saw the empty tomb and hear the reports of the appearance of Jesus to the women, they were still weak in faith and fearful of being arrested by the Jewish authorities. When Jesus appeared to them, he offered proofs of his resurrection by showing them the wounds of his passion, his pierced hands and side. He calmed their fears and brought them peace, the peace which reconciles sinners and makes us friends of God. That's why in the Eucharist, when we exchange the sign of peace, we are exchanging the peace of the risen Lord. A peace that brings us salvation. Jesus did something which, which uh, only love and trust can do. He commissioned his weak and timid apostles to bring the good news to the, of the gospel to the ends of the earth. This sending out of the disciples is parallel to the sending out of Jesus by his heavenly Father. And Jesus fulfilled this mission through his perfect love and obedience to the will of his Father. He called his first disciples, and he now calls each one of us to do the same. Just as he gave his first disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit, so he breathes on each of us the same Holy Spirit which equips us with new life, power, joy, and courage to live each day as followers of Jesus Christ. If you notice, if you attend the, if you attend the Easter Vigil, the bishop breathes the chrism oil. Why the bishop breathes on it? To signify the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in confirmation, in baptism, in confirmation, in ordination, we use the chrism oil to anoint, to signify the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why we are baptized, confirmed, and we were ordained, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, it helps us to live and proclaim the gospel of mercy to others. The last apostle to meet the resurrected Lord was the first to go with him to Jerusalem at Passover time. So the apostle Thomas was a natural pessimist. When Jesus proposed that they would visit Lazarus after receiving news of his illness, Thomas said to the disciples, Let us go, that we would die with him. That was the words of Thomas. And while Thomas deeply loved the Lord, he lacked courage to stand with Jesus in his passion and crucifixion. So Thomas was not there. And after the death of Jesus, Thomas made mistake of withdrawing from the other apostles. He saw loneliness rather than fellowship in this time of trial and adversity. He doubted the women who saw the resurrected Lord, and he doubted his own fellow apostles. That's why the word Thomas the Didymus, meaning he has this uh, doubt. That's why when we make a decision, we have doubts, isn't it? We have uh, two important things, and it's so hard to decide. That's why Didymus, meaning we are confused. Just like Thomas. 
When Thomas finally had the courage to rejoin the other apostles, the Lord Jesus made his presence known to him and reassured him that he had indeed overcome death and risen again. When Thomas recognized his master, he believed and exclaimed that Jesus was the truly Lord and truly God. To the gift of faith, we too proclaim that Jesus is our personal Lord and our God. He died and rose that we too might have life in Him. The Lord offers each one of us new life in His Spirit that we may know Him personally and walk in this way, new way of life to the power of His resurrection. That's why John Paul II established this Sunday as the Divine Mercy Sunday so that anyone would go to the Lord, His mercy would flow into each one of us so that His mercy and salvation we become sharers of that resurrection, become sharers, partakers of His life. Now, the challenge for us today is this. Do we believe in the good news of the Gospel? And do we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring new life, hope, and joy? In other words, do we believe or become, do we become witnesses in this world? Of the reason for it. That is a challenge for us today.